On January 26, 2005, the quiet suburbs of Glendale, California, witnessed a tragedy that still reverberates in the collective memory. An abandoned van on the train tracks, a tormented man on the brink of despair, and a catastrophic event that left 11 lives lost and nearly 200 injured. Juan Manuel Alvarez, a 26-year-old man, dealing with personal problems and the history of suicide attempts, conceived an act that, instead of being his own farewell, became one of the worst railway tragedies in the history of California. His story is not just the chronicle of a crime, it is a reflection of how an impulsive decision can unleash a ripple effect of horror and devastation. In this new episode of La Criminotica, we will explore the mind and motives of Juan Manuel Alvarez. From his failed suicide attempt to the shocking three-train derailment, we'll dive into an investigation that will unravel the details of that fateful day and its lingering aftermath. Join me as we follow the traces of the tragedy, the voices of the survivors, and the maze of justice that culminated in 11 life sentences. Welcome to La Criminotica. We start. Juan Manuel Alvarez. Classification, Mass Murderer. Features, Botched Suicide, He Parked His Truck on the Train Tracks and Caused a Derailment. Number of Victims, 11. Date of Crime, January 26, 2005. Arrest Date, Same Day. Date of Birth, February 26, 1979. Victims, Manuel Alcala, 51, Julia Bennett, 44, Alfonso Caballero, 62, Elizabeth Hill, 62, Henry Kylinski, 39, Scott McEwen, 42, Thomas Ormiston, 58, William Parent, 53, Leonard Romero, 53, Deputy James Tutino, 47, and Don Wiley, 58. Crime Method, Train Derailment. Location, Glendale, USA, California. Status, sentenced to 11 life terms on August 20, 2008. Juan Manuel Alvarez, a frustrated suicide bomber causes a train crash with 10 dead in Los Angeles. January 26, 2005. The police investigation of the train derailment that left 10 dead and more than 200 injured this Wednesday in Glendale, north of Los Angeles, points to a Hispanic who regretted committing suicide and left his car on the tracks. The suspect has been identified as Juan Manuel Alvarez, 26, a resident of the Compton neighborhood, south of Los Angeles. The authorities in charge of the case confirmed that there is a person detained on suspicion of homicide after parking his vehicle on the train tracks and causing the derailment in which three trains were involved. According to initial reports, the suspect drove his vehicle, a green Jeep Cherokee, onto railroad tracks in the Glendale area in an attempt to commit suicide. It appeared this was not his first suicide attempt, as he had stabbed himself several times that night and attempted to slit his wrists, Glendale Police Chief Randy Adams said. Once in the vehicle, the suspect changed his mind and abandoned the car on the railroad tracks, into which the first passenger train, headed for downtown Los Angeles, crashed. This first collision derailed the passenger train, which collided with a locomotive that was circulating in the area. The collision of the commuter train against the locomotive left one of the passenger cars blocking the opposite track, where it was struck by a third commuter train that came from downtown Los Angeles to the town of Burbank, a neighborhood adjacent to Glendale. Adams pointed out that the suspect had stayed to watch the accident and that he was detained by police without offering any resistance. In total, 10 people have been confirmed dead so far, including a police officer, and another 89 people have been transferred to different hospitals in the area. The total number of victims is difficult to determine given that, as they are commuter trains, there are no passenger lists. Several dozen injured have been treated in the area of the accident, a residential town north of Los Angeles with great rail activity early in the morning, rush hour to go to work centers. While the investigation into this tragedy continues, rail traffic has been cut off, 
paralyzing all other transportation in the city. Driver arrested for causing train derailment. January 26, 2005. The Oxnard police arrested the driver of the car hit by the Metrolink train that derailed this morning in that city. The authorities reported that a truck full of gravel was allegedly parked on the road and would have caused the accident that caused five wagons to leave the road, three of them overturned. The car caught fire after impact. The driver of that vehicle fled the scene, but was later apprehended and is in police custody. His identity is unknown. Authorities also report that there were no fatalities in the crash and that at least four people are in critical condition, out of a total of 51 victims. At least 28 of them had to be transferred to a local hospital. Many other passengers have broken arms and legs, or sustained significant head injuries. Additionally, around 1,700 gallons of diesel were spilled across the area as a result of the crash. A team of toxic chemicals has already controlled that problem and is on the scene helping with that task. Metrolink trains have already faced other fatal accidents. On January 26, 2005, Juan Manuel Alvarez parked his SUV, which he doused with gasoline, on the railroad tracks in Glendale waiting for a Metrolink train headed to Los Angeles to pass. Alvarez, who later said that he wanted to commit suicide, regretted it and got out of the car at the last moment to see how the train hit the vehicle, causing a derailment. The train then collided with a Union Pacific freight train parked on an alternate track, as well as another northbound Metrolink train. The accident left 11 people dead and nearly 200 injured. Alvarez, a Compton-based day laborer, was sentenced to 11 consecutive life sentences and is currently incarcerated at Kern Valley State Prison. On September 12, 2008, 25 people were killed and 135 injured when a Metrolink train collided with a Union Pacific freight train in the Chatsworth area. Investigators determined that the Metrolink engineer missed a sign that would have warned him to stop to allow the freight train to pass. It is believed that the engineer, who died in the accident, was sending text messages at the time of the event. Hispanic Causes Fatal Shock January 27, 2005 A train crash in California, the worst ever recorded in the state, left 10 people dead and 20 injured yesterday. The cause, a truck crossed in the middle of the tracks. The clock at the Metrolink station in downtown Los Angeles read 6 a.m. when Juan Manuel Alvarez, a 26-year-old repeat suicide bomber, parked his Grand Cherokee truck on the train tracks. In his mind, the idea of suicide had returned to torment him since, the day before, his wife had rejected him for the umpteenth occasion and, had, reported him to the police for failing to comply with a restraining order. The suicide attempt of Juan Manuel, who had already attempted to slit his wrists and had a long criminal record for violence and drug possession, would become the worst rail tragedy in California history when he repented at the last minute and abandoned your vehicle at the intersection of Chevy Chase and San Fernando Avenues. All this tragedy has been caused by a single disturbed man with suicidal impulses who has left behind him the death of 10 people and more than 200 injuries of varying severity. Glendale Police Chief Randy G. Adams said indignantly. While the rescue teams of firefighters and police were fully engaged in the rescue of the bodies and the transfer of survivors to hospitals in Glendale, Burbank and Los Angeles. Adams said Alvarez will be taken into custody and charged with manslaughter for each death resulting from the accident he caused. According to the reconstruction of the events, one of the trains traveling in the direction of the Burbank Terminal crashed into Juan Manuel Alvarez's car and derailed. The convoy, out of control, crashed into another train traveling in the opposite direction and into a locomotive that was carrying out maneuvers at the same crossing. At the scene of the tragedy, the Metrolink trains looked like a shiny metal snake cut into several parts. Women and men were trying with great difficulty to leave the tangle of twisted iron in which they were trapped. The rescue teams worked at forced marches to rescue the bodies of dozens of survivors, 
while the smell of gasoline permeated everything. It was a horrible noise. My wife went crashing to the other end of the train, while the car broke in two and exploded. The fire and smoke prevented me from seeing where she had gone, but in the end we were able to rescue her from her to take her to the hospital, said Jose Francisco Martinez, a nurse who works at a hospital in Burbank County. Impassive before the scenario of chaos and destruction that he had caused, Juan Manuel Alvarez tried to escape. However, a long list of witnesses who had seen him leave his car cornered him until elements of the police arrived to arrest and question him. He told us that he was trying to commit suicide and that, at the last moment, he repented and abandoned his vehicle to avoid being hit by the train. However, the convoy was unable to stop and caused a series of pileups and derailments that have killed at least 10 people, said Police Chief Randy Adams. According to testimonies collected from Juan Manuel Alvarez's family, his ongoing lawsuits and his recent separation from his wife had led to a restraining order issued by a Burbank County judge. On the eve of the tragedy, Juan Manuel would have defied that restraining order to go find his wife and his son and assure them that he had already given up drugs, that he had found a new job and that he wanted a new one. Chance but his wife rejected him and reported him to the police, unleashing the anger and despair of a man who caused the worst rail tragedy in California history and who today faces a long list of criminal charges and the possibility of a life imprisonment. Dozens of experts and experts from the National Board for Transportation Safety remained at the scene of the tragedy conducting studies and measurements to document one of the worst rail accidents in the history of the United States. In March 1999, an Amtrak train collided with a truck and derailed near Bourbonnais, Illinois, killing 11 people and injuring more than 100. Hundreds of families affected by this accident crowded into hospitals, while the Mexican consulate in Los Angeles remained on guard in the event that Mexican compatriots had died or were hospitalized in different hospitals in the area. Blood on the Tracks July 2, 2008 the sad case of Juan Manuel Alvarez, the Mexican immigrant who killed 11 people by running his SUV in front of a passing train, holds important lessons for Valley residents. Call me Jeremiah. I am referring to the Old Testament prophet, the one who warned the Jewish people of endless calamities. On Friday I was a guest on Radio KDNA with Mrs. Ninfa Gutierrez. The forum-style show was about the candidates for the presidency of the United States, but I think part of the topic that got the attention was assimilation. And when talking about assimilation, the case of Juan Manuel Alvarez came to mind, the 29-year-old man, I was 26 at the time, who in 2005 put his Jeep Cherokee on a train track in Glendale, California, a city in the middle of Los Angeles, in a suicide attempt. At the last minute, according to him, he regretted it and tried to remove the vehicle from him, but it did not start, so he left it there. What did happen was that a passenger train slammed squarely into the jeep, causing the locomotive to derail, crashing into a freight train. The result was 11 dead and 180 wounded. Last week, a jury found Alvarez guilty of 11 counts of first-degree murder. He could be sentenced to death. What does that have to do with Yakima and assimilation? Ah, uh, here I go. Well, you see, I used to take that same Metrolink train just a few months before that tragedy when I worked for a weekly in Ventura, a city north of Los Angeles. It is curious that sometimes he boarded the train in Glendale, precisely very close to where such an incident occurred. I think that as human beings, and in my case as a journalist, the question that rumbled in my brain as soon as I heard about this tragedy three years ago was, why? Because? What was it that led a Mexican immigrant from Mexicali, a border city that borders the city of my childhood, Calexico, to commit the worst rail disaster in recent times in the United States? According to Alvarez's own statements in court and other witnesses, the convicted murderer had separated from his wife and was living in a boarding house at the time of the suicide attempt. He said, according to press reports, that he tried to take his own life to get the attention of his ex-wife. 
Local newspapers have published many stories about it, but the Washington Post was the newspaper that thoroughly interviewed Alvarez's wife and her relatives and was closest to answering the elusive why. According to those interviewed, Alvarez suffered from hallucinations since he was a child, they assure that he said that a ghostly being slept with him. When he was nine years old, he always said there was someone else in the room, Beto, Alvarez's cousin, told the Post. He said that they got into his bed and slept with him. He said that he was an evil spirit. Like many immigrants, Alvarez left his family in Baja California and went to live in Los Angeles, according to the Post. There he met his wife, Carmelita, in an Aztec dance group, Zyptotec, with whom they danced at festivals, churches, etc. They joined. But over time he began to suspect his wife, who worked as a waitress, thinking that she was cheating on him with another, he hallucinated that his wife was making pornographic videos with her supposed lover. According to the wife, Alvarez's hallucinations worsened when he lost his job and began using methamphetamine and went into a deep depression. It turned out to be so unbearable that he had to kick him out of the house, getting a restraining order against him, the wife said. The morning that Alvarez killed 11 people, he was driving his Jeep Cherokee. In the back seats, according to press statements, he saw her wife and her lover, laughing at him. The rest is history. We may never know, and it may be for the best that way, what really happened between Alvarez, his wife and his family. The truth is that something was wrong. Very badly. Yes. The story of Alvarez and his wife, with the difficulties that emigrating to distant lands brings with it, with new customs, often hostile, is something that can also be seen in the Yakima Valley. It is the dark side of assimilation. It's the part that no one warned us about when they told us about the American dream. I am not at all exonerating Alvarez from guilt. Some relatives of the victim said after the sentence that Alvarez deserves the death penalty. Without a doubt, his pain is very great. But what is also true is that many times assimilation into this new world in the United States demands a lot from us. Apart from learning English, it constantly requires us in subtle and sometimes not so much ways to leave our families, to get rid of our values, to forget our roots, to abandon the husband or wife who was faithful to us in our worst times. That if we are children we will abandon our parents, many times in a nursing home, and that we will make a clean slate. It is a very high price to pay. I think we would do well to define what it really means to assimilate. Call me Jeremiah. The trial of Juan Manuel Alvarez, who caused a derailment that killed 11 people in January 2005, has concluded. August 20, 2008. A man who in January 2005 parked his SUV on railroad tracks along the Glendale Los Angeles border and caused a train derailment that killed 11 and injured 118, was sentenced Wednesday to 11 consecutive life terms. Juan Manuel Alvarez, 29, was convicted June 26 of 11 counts of first-degree murder and one count of arson for his actions on January 26, 2005, which led to the deadliest rail accident in United States history. Since 1999, the same jury that found him guilty on July 15 recommended that the former Compton resident be sentenced to life in prison without bail instead of capital punishment. During the hearing, Los Angeles Superior Court Judge William Pounders heard emotional testimony from relatives of those killed or injured in the disaster. Alvarez, who spent more than four days on the stand during his trial, testified that he was attempting suicide when he parked his green Jeep Cherokee on the train track south of Chevy Chase Street in Glendale, but changed his mind and was unable to move the truck on time. He was going to kill me, Alvarez testified. I feel horrible and I apologize. During the trial, Assistant District Attorney John Monahan told the panel that the defendant deserved the death penalty because he never showed any real remorse and because he didn't care about anyone but him. The prosecutor said that the facts of the crime were so overwhelming that alone dictated the death penalty. 
Alvarez's lawyer, Michael Belter, responded that justice in this case would be served by giving him a sentence in the penitentiary for the rest of his life. Painful Catastrophe Prosecutors responded that the then 26-year-old construction worker tried to cause a catastrophe to get the attention of his wife. The 100 Metrolink train, heading south to Union Station, derailed after colliding with Alvarez's vehicle before colliding with the 901 northbound Metrolink train. The train also collided with a Union Pacific locomotive that ended up overturning. Glendale Fire Department investigators said the jeep had been doused inside and out with gasoline. This caused a fire after the 100 train collided with the vehicle on the tracks. It was the deadliest accident in the history of Metrolink, which began its services in 1992. Jurors heard testimony for two and a half days from the 11 families of the victims who died in the crash, as well as testimony from passengers who survived but will have to live with physical pain for the rest of their lives. The panel also heard from several of Alvarez's relatives, including his wife Carmelita, from whom he was separated when the crash occurred, as well as his mother Leticia Ayala. Among those killed in the incident were train conductor Tom Ormiston, a 58-year-old Vietnam War veteran who was nearing retirement from a rail career that began in 1970, Sheriff's Deputy James Titino, 47, who occasionally took the train to his job at the Central Men's Jail in downtown Los Angeles. Conclusion The tragic case described reflects a story that left an indelible mark on the community and on the affected families. The trial against Alvarez became a symbol of a broader debate about justice, punishment and responsibility. The description of the defense attorney and the prosecutor highlights the complexity of the emotions and legal opinions involved in this case. The rail disaster, with its devastating loss of life and lasting impact on survivors, underscores the importance of safety, empathy and consideration in all facets of daily life. The lives lost, like that of the veteran train conductor and sheriff's deputy, highlight the value and dignity of ordinary people in our society. Dear new subscribers, thank you for joining us on this journey through such a powerful and emotional story. We hope you find value in what we share and how we strive to explore deep and meaningful themes. Stay tuned for more episodes as we continue to unravel narratives that can teach us, move us, and ultimately connect us more deeply with our shared humanity. Until next time.